Looking up to heaven, he sighed and saith unto him, Epitha, that is, be opened. And straightway his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plainly, rather than he spake plain. Verse 36, and he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more a great deal they published it and were beyond measure astonished, saying, He have done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Isn't that powerful? Well, let's go through here tonight and just unpack this message for just a short time that we have here tonight. Let's unpack this. And you see here in verse number 31, it says, again, uh, Jesus came, uh, he departed the coast of Tyre and Sidon, and he came to the Sea of Galilee there uh, through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. Now, the word Decapolis, the name Decapolis means 10 cities, 10 cities. So what's about to happen is about to have 10 times the impact. You notice when Jesus always speaks in a region, what he says affects that region. The miracles uh, affects his miracle in one city, affects that city, and his fame spreads abroad. Well, here we have it here. He's in the midst of 10 cities. And so he's about to have 10 times the, 10, 10, uh, times the impact. And that's the first part of the word that I want to give you tonight. If you hear the voice of the Lord, and if you follow this prescription, that he's going to give you here tonight, that your ministry will begin to have 10 times the impact. Because it's not just what you do, but it's also where you do it. And the Father is a master at putting his people at the right place at the right time. Hallelujah. He's a master. We know that from, uh, we know that from King David, right? Just a shepherd boy in obscurity. Uh, but David was waiting on his time, waiting on God to put him in a place where he would shine greatly. And, of course, the whole kingdom knew it as he defeated Goliath. Amen? So, uh, so Jesus, his ministry is about to have ten times the impact because he's here at Decapolis. Now, let's find out what happens here. In verse 32, and it says, And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had, a, and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseeched him. In other words, they begged him, Lord, touch him. Now, understand something. Here is a prophetic view. Because many in today's church, not all, but many in today's church are blind and have a, not blind, sorry, are deaf. Yeah, some of them are blind, yeah. Many in today's church are deaf and have an impediment in speech. That is, they can't hear from God. The ears are stopped up, closed. They have a hard time hearing. And let me tell you, one of the most valuable things that we can have in this life today is the ability to hear from God. With all this junk that is going around, shootings and random acts of violence and all this kind of crazy stuff, you need to hear from God when, it, when he tells you, stay at home, don't go. Hallelujah. You need to hear from God. So I'm telling you, there are many that are Christians that are deaf, cannot hear the voice of God. But I'm telling you, God's about to fix this. Jesus is about to fix this in his church. So here's a man that is deaf, can't hear, and he also has a speech impediment. Now, this word impediment uh, in the Greek here, it means to, to, be, to have a stammer or to stutter. So he can speak, he, but it just brings him very much difficulty to speak. He can form the words, but when he does, it, it's difficult and it's hard for him to communicate it's hard for him to bring the words forth. And I've told you this before. Many of you know my testimony, how when I was younger and even some into my adult life, I had difficulty speaking depending on, uh, depending on where I was. It wasn't a physical thing, but an emotional thing. I was trapped. I was tied. And depending on the environment, my words would not come out. I would stutter and I would stammer. I would stutter and I would stammer and people would look. And when I was younger in elementary school and high school, they would look in class. They would point. They would stare and all of that stuff. They would joke. They would tease. They would mock me, humiliate me because I couldn't say something words but Jesus fixed that isn't that wonderful 
So here's this man that, um, and you see this as some that are in the church, again, don't have the ability to hear, hear God's voice and don't have the ability to speak plainly, to communicate the gospel plainly before others. We're intimidated easy, easily. We are afraid to share our faith, but that's about to change. So see this man as symbolic of many that are in the church today, here again, can't hear and can't communicate. We can communicate. We can say something, but it's with very, but it's with a whole lot of difficulty. It's hard. It's hard. There is something blocking it. There is something that is closing the way. Remember, at the very end of this, Jesus uh, says the words, um, epitha, which means be opened. So something is closed. His ears are closed. His mouth to some regard, is closed, but Jesus is about to open it. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? He's about to open it. So let's look a little bit further here. Now let's look in, uh, and down, down in verse 33, and we're going to be getting into how this is going to happen, how it's going to happen. Verse 33 says, And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears, and he spit and touched his tongue. Now, the first thing we need to see here is that God, Jesus, took the man aside from the multitude. He took him aside. He didn't wait on the man to come. He brought the man out of it. Now, it's very interesting. Now, this, this multitude symbolizes a lot of noise. This is a, a, a lot of the crowd and, 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 you know, and it talks about people's thoughts and, and their feelings and you know, and some people would pity him. Oh, poor you, poor you. And some people said, well, you'll never be anything. You'll, you'll never be like us. You can't communicate like we do. You can't hear. You know, you're just kind of going through the motions. You're not your best self. You know, there are a lot of people with a, with a lot of different attitudes. And, and some people, maybe members of his family, are embarrassed by him. Oh, yeah, that, that's, my, that's, my, that's my son. That, that, that's my son. Yeah, yeah, he's the one that stutters. He, he's the one that stutters. Yeah, one of the most embarrassing things that, that has ever happened to me was, again, being in front of a class or, and, or making a presentation before the student body, and I stand up and I stammer. And children aren't always kind. So in that crowd, you have people, again, that are, they maybe pity him and people that maybe have laughed at him, people that have humiliated him, people, again, that feel sorry for him. Oh, poor old you. People who say that he is defective or that he is deficient or that he'll never amount to anything. And some would even say he's dumb. That's one thing they called the, those that uh, were deaf, you know, deaf and dumb or they couldn't speak deaf and dumb this you know he's not going to go anywhere but Jesus is a master at taking the throwaway and turning it into something masterful isn't that something so the first thing Jesus is is he takes him away from the multitude come away from all of that come away from all that and that's one thing the Lord does. He will pull you away from some of your haters, from, your, from the folk that criticize you, and, and he'll pull you aside, and you'll wonder, why don't they hang around me anymore? It's not them, it's him. Why don't I want to go where they go anymore? Why, why do I feel like such a loner now? Let me tell you sometime. Let me tell you, it's not them, it's him. As Jesus pulls you away, because what Jesus is about to do in your life, he doesn't do all the time. As a matter of fact, there's no other place in Scripture where you find how Jesus is about to do this miracle. And every part of this is, is prophetic. I just, that's the word for tonight, prophetic. It is so prophetic. The first thing the Lord does when he pulls him aside from the crowd, when he pulls him out of the atmosphere, because when you have a lot of people, that's an atmosphere. If everybody's angry and you stand it long enough, you'll be angry. If everybody's upset, if everybody's depressed, you stand it long enough, you'll also be depressed. So he takes them out of that atmosphere into a place where it's just Jesus and the man. And the first thing Jesus does is he puts his fingers in the man's ears. Now, normally people have two ears. 
Okay, that was a good place to laugh there. But normally, people have two ears. And Jesus has, you know, he puts his fingers in the man's ears. Now, this is highly prophetic because what does God use? Think about it in Scripture. What do, where do we see God using his finger? We see him writing the Ten Commandments with his finger. And we see Jesus, uh, in the case of the woman that was caught in adultery, you know, they accuse her and Jesus stoops down and he begins to write on the ground with his finger. Writing a new commandment, the one that gave the law, is now changing, is now creating. So you see here, and of course, that was an example of his grace, of the grace, of, of the grace that only Jesus would bring, right? The law came by Moses, but grace and truth comes by Jesus Christ. So we see here, God's writing, he writes with his finger. In one ear, you'll see um, there is a picture of the law. And then the other ear, there's a picture of grace. And so you see here, this man now has balance, if you will. There is balance here. As the Lord says, now it's time for me to balance you. You have, because some people have an, an impure mixture between the two, law and grace. They both are purposeful. They both for a purpose because the law, it, the law says, and we understand this, that we cannot become holy. We cannot become right in our own human effort. Law tells you that you have a need for a Savior. You need his help. Grace says, you don't have to measure up. I measured up for you. I've done these things for you. Now just believe and receive. Law says, I need you. Jesus, the grace, grace says, I've got you. Hallelujah. I've got you. I've got you. In your weakness is my strength now made perfect. He puts this in his ears. And then secondly, what do we find? Secondly, the Lord spits. Now, the, the Amplified Bible says that the Lord spits on his fingers and he touches the man's tongue. Now, this is highly prophetic, of course, because what's in the mouth of Jesus now comes in this man's mouth. And this often talks about words. There's words that comes out of our mouth. Words comes out of my mouth. So symbolically, we're seeing how Jesus is now putting his word in this man's mouth. Well, the same thing happened there. Let me show you this too in the book of Jeremiah. Let's look at Jeremiah, Jeremiah, the first chapter. Let me read to you verses 9 and 10 out of the Amplified, I'm sorry, out of the New Living Translation. I love the way it reads, and I want you to hear this because this is what's happening. Jeremiah, the first chapter, verses 9 and 10, it says this, then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, look, I have put my word in your mouth. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and, and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. So what's happening here, as God changes your speech, he puts his word in your mouth, and you have a balance now, knowing that you balance the fingers in your ears, knowing that you need him, you knowing that you need him, and knowing that also he's willing to impart his power and strength into your life. There comes a good balance, and there's a good marriage, and there's a, there's a good relationship there. There's a pull we're pulling on him and he's pushing he's pushing his power and we're receiving back and forth we are receiving because of that mixture because of that because of that because of his fingers in our ears now we understand only the man that understands his weakness will receive God's strength you'll never receive the grace of God if you're prideful and boastful and if you think well I can do this I got that well, this is why where the law steps in, of course, because the more you try to do the law, the more you understand that you can't. The more you try your, your best out of your human effort to live right, to do right, to be right, the more you're going to fall. But the more you submit to what Jesus has done for you and declare his word, declare that you are now the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, declare that God has made you holy. He has made you blameless in his sight through Christ Jesus our Lord. The more you yield to his presence, the more you yield to the spirit of Christ, the more you become like him. The more you receive his word, the more you declare what he says, the more you believe in what he says, the more you spend time in his presence, the more you get in the 
atmosphere, the more you become like him because we understand that we were destined, we were preordained, we were, we were destined before the foundation of the world to become like Christ. And so there is a mixture there. So the Lord puts his fingers in his ears and there is a balance. And you know, when people have what they call vertigo, when they have vertigo, there's something in between the ears that is just not quite right. They get off balance. So the Lord fixes his balance and many of us need our balance fixed. This is why some of us are so terribly religious and look down upon others because we're leaning on our strength and not his strength. Are you hearing? And so he puts, the Lord puts his words into his mouth. This is what's happening here. And then immediately, let's, let's look and see what happens and we're, and we're closing here. So, oh my God, we for, oh Lord Jesus, thank you. Look at this before we go any further. This is so powerful. And so let's look at this one more time. And verse 33, he says, and he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and he spat and touched his tongue. Now, and then look at verse 34 and looking up to heaven. This is what Jesus did. And looking up to heaven. You know, scripture says, I will look uh, to the hills from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. So he's facing another world, another power. What's about to happen is not going to come from this world. It's about to come from another world. It's not to come from this kingdom, but another kingdom altogether. And there's another occasion where Jesus looked up before he released power. And that was, of course, when he divided the fishes and the loaves. Remember, he got the items, the fish and the loaves, and he looked up toward heaven and he blessed it and he breaked it. Meaning that here again, power is about to come from there and it's about to be released here. There's some sort of miracle, some sort of transference that's about to happen. It's about to come from here and it's about to be released to there. Now, understand something. The moment Jesus put his fingers in the man's ears, the man should have heard. The moment Jesus put his, uh, did that divine spittle and touched the man's tongue, his tongue should have been open. He should have been able to speak. But there was something else that was missing. The Bible says after he did this, he looked up and then he sighed. And then he spoke. A sigh, if you look this up, just... You can Google it if you like it. A sigh means a long, deep breath, a long, deep exhale. (sighs) Anybody have a sigh before? (sighs) A sigh comes from the inside. It comes from deep down within you. You've got to, (sighs) oh, Lord. We may say that, oh, Lord, help me, help me, help me. It comes from deep within. So the Lord looks up and he sighs. He breathes out. And a sigh is breath. Breath is wind. Wind is spirit. And so we see over this man, the Lord puts his fingers in his ears first. And he, he spits on his fingers and puts it on his tongue. And then Jesus looks up and he breathes. <sighs> He breathes over him. This sigh meaning breath, breath meaning wind. Wind is interpreted also spirit. So he releases his spirit. There's a release of the spirit over this man. Hear me. There's a release of the spirit. Just like the Lord Jesus said upon the disciples uh, as he returned after his resurrection, he breathed upon them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. There's a release or an activation as the Lord releases his presence, releases his his breath upon you. Hallelujah. So we've got things together. You're in balance now and you've got his word, but you can't go without his spirits. So he imparts his power to you, great authority to you. And this is what's happening. Hallelujah. To those that will allow Jesus to pull them away. He took him by the hand. You've been mocked too long. You've been talked about too long. You've been just surviving too long. Now it's time for you to thrive. Now it's time for you to go into your actual mission and calling. And so the Lord Jesus breathed upon the man. And then what happened? After he breathed upon him, or he sighed, King James says, and said unto him, uh, uh, Ephatha, 
or Ephatha, which interpreted, which is, of course, uh, Aramaic, uh, which is interpreted, be opened. Remember, it seemed like there was something clogging up the man's hearing and, and something over his mouth, something closed. You know, the Bible does, us, does not say this, that this man was unintelligent. You know, you can have all the right words to say but not be able to say it. Doesn't say that he was blind, doesn't say that he was lame, doesn't say he was paralyzed, doesn't say that he had any sickness whatsoever. He just could not hear and he could not speak. And I'm telling you, when you, you, this way, you can be a prisoner, especially, God bless you, sisters. God help you if you can't, if you can't speak. Hallelujah. We have a lot of words, a lot of words. And we have to get our words out. Isn't it a terrible thing? You have a lot to say and you just can't say it. You just can't say it. My God, but the Lord said, I'm going to loose that. Hear me. And he gives, us, he gives you the power and the authority with that as he breathes on you. And then he says, be open. Here's a decree. Here's what's missing. Here's what's missing. The decree from the Lord. Be open. Be open. That is someone, God gives authority in someone's life to speak over you and declare the words, Ephatha, be opened. He declares it over you so that you can go forth and declare it over someone else. Be opened. Because there are some things that you can't do by yourself or yourself. God will commission someone else to declare the word over your life. Be opened. Be opened. And I love the way the Amplified Bible says it again here because it not only says open and amplified, it says be opened and released. Be open and release, meaning that there is something inside of you that's been caged up, that's been closed off. Once the Lord, once the Lord opens a door, what's inside is about to bust out. Hallelujah. Be opened and be released. But what happens after that? What happens after that moment? After the Lord opens and, and releases it, verse 35 says, and straightway his ears were open. And the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. Isn't that wonderful? The very first voice he heard was the voice of God. The very first word that he could say plainly, I'm sure, was thank you. Was a word of praise. Isn't that awesome? Hallelujah. And what happened? And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much, so much the more, a great deal, they published it. Don't tell anybody. Ooh, ooh. The more he told them, don't say, ooh, the more they published it. And why was that important? Think about where he is in Decapolis, 10 cities. He had performed a miracle so astonishing to them that they could not keep it in. Ooh, they couldn't. The more Jesus told them, don't tell nobody. Ooh, the more he told them, don't say it. Ooh, they were about to bust. Let's see what condition this fire was in, verse 37. And it says, and they, it says, verse 37, and were beyond measure astonished, saying, he have done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. They were astonished. <laughs> we never see it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Astonished beyond measure. They couldn't keep that in. Jesus had 10 times the impact, and that's what's going to happen with you as you allow God to pull you away. And put balance in your life. Balance. Understand, you have a need for him. And he has power that is ready for you. Allow him to put his, his, his words in your mouth and allow him to breathe upon you. Because God has a fresh anointing and a fresh move of his spirit that is exactly just for you. So I pray today that you've heard the voice of God and that you'll receive this word. Be opened and released. I thank God for you tonight.
Thank you for joining us for Brothers of the Word because, brother, you need the Word. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord Jesus a mighty hand of praise. Hallelujah. We receive it, Lord. We receive it. And I say to all of you here tonight, be opened and be released. Be opened and be released. Whatever was held up in your life, I declare be opened and released. Whatever was closed up, be opened and released. Be released into your assignment and destiny in Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right.